All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Senior Tech Coffee. Uh, today, we'll be discussing uh, cutting the cord and streaming. So what are your options if you decide to bail on your cable and uh, access your content uh, using a streaming uh, service? Um, Senior Tech Coffee, of course, is brought to you by uh, Prime of Life Tech, and I provide IT education and technical support for your computers, mobile devices, uh, smart home devices, home networks, and those types of things. Uh, so as far as our uh, program today, we're going to be talking about, you know, what, it, what does it mean to cut the cord? Um, what are some of the streaming hardware options that you should consider or you'll have to think about if you want to cut the cord and still access the same types of programs uh, that you're used to uh, having on cable or uh, satellite, uh, as well as local programming. Uh, and then what are some of the different streaming services that are out there? It's, um, it's not going to be an exhaustive list of all of your streaming options, but I'm going to hit the probably the major highlights that you've, um, you've heard about or maybe you're even using. So what does it mean when we cut the cord? Well, essentially, that's canceling your cable TV or your satellite service. I mean, most of uh, I haven't had um, cable or satellite TV for 10 years. Um, I used to have Dish. It ran about uh, 80 bucks a month, I want to say, uh, back in the day. And that was 10 years ago. So I have no idea what it costs now. Um, Comcast is the only game in town here where, uh, where I live in the, the West Metro Denver area. And, um, and I believe that it runs about that about 80 bucks a month or so. And that's without any premium channels like HBO and that kind of thing. So, um, so canceling your cable or TV service. Um, but then if you still want to be able to access similar programming, like what you're used to with cable or satellite TV, then it's going to be a matter of choosing the right um, streaming apps and devices. Um, or using a smart TV that has the ability to um, have those apps installed just natively on the television itself. Um, does require a high speed internet connection to be able to run video over the internet. Uh, so you definitely need something that is, you know, at least the, the minimal level of high speed uh, access. Um, but you also have the option besides using your, your TV um, or your TV plus some type of device um, to view content on small screens. So you can use your tablet, you can use your smartphone uh, to also run uh, video content uh, from some of these services. Um, generally requires a service specific app. Uh, so Netflix has their own app, Amazon Prime and so forth. And most of the services are going to be fee based, right? You have to have a subscription. So, uh, but is it as much as a cable or satellite uh, subscription? Chances are it's probably at least 25 to 30% less, depending on the combination of things that you get. Um, so, as I mentioned, some of the requirements for streaming you have to have a high speed internet. Uh, the, the, the more bandwidth you have, the more reliable your service uh, is going to be for streaming video. That being said, I believe that I have Comcast internet with the 20 megabit per second um, uh, you know, download speed. And on, with a, maybe the occasional uh, rare exception, my video, streaming video on things like Netflix, Amazon Prime is seamless. Uh, it's really great. Um, and that's the, pretty much the, the minimal level of, of, of service as far as um, bandwidth is concerned with Comcast in my case. Um, you need, uh, you may need a, uh, well, you definitely need a smart TV computer or some type of mobile device to do streaming. Um, you may need 
or desire a dedicated streaming device, depending on the vintage of your TV and whether or not it supports inst downloading and installing some of the streaming apps that you'll be um, uh, required to use. So, <clears throat> and in addition, you'll, you generally have to create an account with all of these services. Um, I don't think there's really any exception to that, except for maybe just, you know, the basic YouTube. You don't have to actually be signed in to use YouTube, for example. Um, but Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, any of these other services, you, you have to have an account. So what's some of the streaming hardware that you need to consider if you're gonna go for streaming? So as I mentioned, you know, your mobile devices are certainly an option if you wanna watch on the small screen. Uh, maybe you wanna watch, you know, a news broadcast, uh, you know, from the comfort of your, of your bedroom uh, and you don't have a TV in the bedroom. Um, you could use your tablet or smartphone. Um, you can stream directly to your computer. Uh, so if you're sitting at your computer and you want to watch, uh, you know, CNN, let's say, um, you can just run the CNN live feed right from your computer. Um, smart displays, um, the, um, essentially the, the, um, like a smart speaker only with a, with a, with an actual display on it, um, sort of like a tablet. Um, uh, in kind of in a dedicated sense, really, um, both Google and Amazon make uh, smart displays. Uh, they have a lot of different uses, but you can also stream to them, but they're pretty small screen. So it's going to be, you know, tablet sized, essentially. Um, and then, of course, smart TVs. Um, you know, I have a Samsung that is probably four or five years old. Um, and I can install apps like, you know, Amazon Prime, Netflix, and so forth directly on the TV. Um, and so I can actually run those things from the TV, um, you know, using my TV remote and all that kind of stuff. Uh, signing into a, uh, online accounts using a remote is, uh, is a pain. <laughs> I'll just I'll just say that um, you know you have to scroll around with your remote and hit the enter key for each letter that kind of thing. Um, so there's ways around that if you um, if you use uh, if you have the right mobile device set up where essentially your phone acts like a remote, um, but otherwise you know you're stuck navigating around with your remote to search for programming or even just log into these different services. Um, now let's talk about some of the dedicated streaming devices that you have available. Now, some of you may have a TV that's an older TV. Um, it may not have the ability to connect to the internet, uh, download apps, and uh, that sort of thing. So what what are your streaming options if you're in that, that kind of situation and you're just you either don't want to or or can't upgrade your tv for some reason um all of the devices that you see listed here um they generally require at a minimum like an hdmi connection to get to, to plug into your tv there may be some different connectors uh usb um generally like the the red yellow uh, the red, white, yellow connectors that you would have the RCA connectors as they're known uh, from back in the day on older TVs. Um, you can probably get some kind of adapter for that potentially. Um, but if it's that old of a TV, you may not be able to hook up any of these devices if it doesn't at least have an HDMI connection. Um, generally speaking, all of the devices that you see listed here with probably with the exception of the sling TV and the smart displays, but so Roku on up are going to be in the neighborhood of 30 to $50. And some of them come bundled with other things. Um, I was looking at the new Chromecast Google just, um, put out a bunch of new products in the last few weeks. One of them being a upgraded Chromecast, um, Chromecast is an interesting device. Um, the old one, you basically 
would connect to the Chromecast with a mobile device um, and then run your programming from an app on your mobile device. So for example, you could have Netflix installed on your tablet, connect through the Chrome and essentially run, uh, run the programming on the TV by casting from the, uh, from the, the mobile device itself. The new Chromecast um, lets you install or choose, it has a bunch of apps installed and you can choose which ones that you want to use and or subscribe to. It actually has a, its own remote now and it also has a voice uh, that you can use to, um, you know, basically do your searching and um, selecting programs by name and that sort of thing. And it's pretty slick. It also has this like combined view. So let's say, for example, I had subscriptions to Netflix, Amazon Prime and Hulu. It would put all of my programs in one screen and I don't have to like if I wanted to switch, you know, providers, I don't have to like back out of the Netflix app and then start the Hulu app. It's got my Hulu programming, my Netflix programming, and my Amazon Prime programming all on one screen. That's kind of a slick feature. Um, the Amazon Fire, um, they are, um, they have the, uh, the voice activation as well on some of their devices. Um, Apple TV, uh, Roku, um, uh, Apple TV, I don't, I think you can use Siri on your mobile device. So you could use it on your phone, uh, for example, to interface with the Apple TV. Um, but the Apple TV, a lot of the programming, it's essentially like a dedicated box that has all the apps installed on it. You still have to have your subscriptions for different things. Even Apple TV itself has its own um, subscription-based programming. Um, <clears throat> Roku, um, I, have a, I have a client who uses a Roku, uh, helped to set her up with that. They're really easy to install. Um, and again, they essentially come with all of the apps that you need installed and you you know just have to have the account information that you you know for your account to log in and run those apps through the roku she has an older tv it is a flat panel tv with hdmi connection and that sort of thing but um i don't know if her firmware is really way out of date or whatever but she she's never been able to connect her tv itself to her wireless internet in the house so the roku uh, makes it really easy for her to take an older TV, plug in a device, and still be able to run all of, you know, basically the latest streaming apps from, you know, this little device. And it has its own remote as well. Um, Sling TV. Um, Sling TV is one of the ones, one of the few uh, streaming devices uh, that also supports local programming. So it's essentially got really two devices. One is essentially a digital antenna, like what you could just plug into your normal TV to get broadcast, you know, digital TV, uh, which we've had in the Denver area and which exists in a lot of different parts of the country as well uh, for, for a number of years. Um, and to my knowledge, Sling TV is one of the few uh, services that supports uh, your local programming. Smart displays, as I mentioned before, are another option, essentially like a dedicated tablet with, you know, a um, digital assistant, you know, Siri or um, uh, actually not Siri so much. I don't think Apple has a smart display. So Siri's out as far as smart displays are concerned, but Google Assistant and um, uh, Alexa are available uh, on smart displays. All right, um, and really the services, the streaming services are really the heart of, of streaming. Um, so what are the different services that are available? Wh which, if any of them, are substitutes, like almost a, you know, 
channel for channel substitute for um, cable TV. We'll talk about some of that here in just a second. So these are the major um, streaming services. I mean, there's others uh, that are out there. Peacock is a pretty new one. Um, I honestly don't know much about Peacock, um, but in my research, what I was really looking for are, you know, what are the popular services that a lot of people use uh, that are, or that are commonly used? Um, and among them, which can be um, a substitute for your, um, your cable TV? And uh, it uh, looks like we have a question. Uh, okay, Sling TV, no adapter, but it is not giving me local channels even though I pay for the blue package. So that could be, that was from Kim. Um, so that could be a, um, that could potentially just be a hardware issue. You like, you might be lacking the, the digital antenna piece. Not really sure without knowing your specific setup. Um, anyhow, um, so among these different services, um, was, you know, Amazon Prime. Um, so if you are, if you subscribe to Amazon Prime, which is mostly known for, um, you know, the, the, base, the free shipping that you get on virtually everything that you buy on Amazon once you have that uh, type of subscription. Um, but Amazon Prime video content is included with your free shipping when you pay for that, that uh, subscription on Amazon. They have a pretty broad array of programs if you're not uh, familiar with Amazon Prime. Um, and we'll get into, a, I have a slide coming up here that essentially has a matrix of all the different types of uh, programs that each of these services will uh, uh, support or provide. Um, CBS All Access, um, that's CBS's um, streaming service. Um, to my knowledge, they don't have like the necessarily the full catalog of all CV CBS programming, um, although um, that that could be different uh, as of as of this presentation. Um, but what they do definitely have is exclusive programming that you can't normally watch over broadcast CBS. Um, the um, uh, what's the name of that show? Um, Chris, Christine Jaransky, I want to say, I'm probably totally blowing the name, um, plays like the female uh, detective or lawyer, I forget. That's a pretty popular show that I know my client watches. Um, uh, but like the, the newer Star Trek shows, those are only accessible uh, via the CBS All Access, uh, for example. Um, Disney Plus, has been a um, a fairly recent uh, uh, entry in the uh, the lineup of streaming services. Um, anyone who uh, subscribed to Disney Plus um, got to see the uh, the recorded version of the of the um, Hamilton play um, musical that uh, so that was only available on Disney Plus, and I know that was that's pretty popular. Uh, pretty popular show. Um, HBO Max um, is also a good one. It um, also has exclusive content um, that's, uh, I think there's actually content that's only available in the streaming version of HBO Max um, that you can't necessarily get with cable. Um, Hulu uh, and Hulu Live TV. There's there's really two parts to that. So there's there's regular Hulu, which is all you know a premium service. You have to you have to. There's a monthly bill for that. Um, Hulu Live TV is everything that Hulu has, which is you know original and and other and non-original programming, and then the live TV component allows you to have things like, you know, cable news and, uh, and some other, other stuff that you don't get with the normal Hulu uh, uh, subscription. Netflix, of course, I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with Netflix. Um, you know, I was a Netflix user when um, they were still, when I was uh, still uh, getting uh, DVDs in the mail. So um, I was actually, if, a fairly early adopter of the, the streaming Netflix um, 
mostly because I didn't want to have to deal with the DVDs. And um, so <clears throat> originally it was a package where you had DVDs plus streaming. And then, uh, and I, you can still do that. In fact, I think my parents still get the DVDs from Netflix, believe it or not. Um, and and they're use the streaming less than watching the, the, uh, the DVD movies, which I find interesting. Um, anyhow, um, PBS, if you're not familiar with it, PBS has um, essentially all of their content uh, streaming online. Um, to get access to their full catalog, you do have to be a donor. Um, and they will let you um, essentially access all of their whole catalog for the minimum uh, donation, which is like 60 bucks a year, I want to say. Um, so um, if you like public, uh, uh, public TV type programming, that's a really good one to check out. And um, they have their own app. Um, and uh, you can, that's probably the best way to access their programming is through their own app. Um, the Sling TV um, is not one that I am as familiar with as a lot of these others. Um, uh, Kim actually is a subscriber, so she may be able to uh, have some, she may have some comments on that. Um, the Sling TV is one of the options here, one of like three options here that includes um, essentially, or that is essentially like a cable substitute in terms of the scope of the programming that they, uh, that they offer. Um, YouTube, regular YouTube, and then there's YouTube TV. YouTube TV, is, I think, well, first off, everyone is more or less familiar with regular YouTube, where you can post your own content. You know, my, these talks, I post to regular YouTube uh, on, my, on my channel. Um, I don't have to pay for that. Um, and I don't, to my knowledge, there's really no limit to the amount of content that I can post. Um, YouTube TV gives you everything that YouTube has, but it also includes um, a lot of the, you know, cable TV type channels like um, cable news um, and those types of things that uh, you can't get really with most of these other services. And then, of course, live streaming content. Um, and here I mean things like Facebook Live, uh, live YouTube uh, broadcasts, or other types of uh, programming uh, are also things that you can access um, either on your mobile devices or with the right app on your smart TV. And then there's, of course, the casting option as well. Um, and let's see, Facebook, YouTube, um, and then the Chrome browser itself um, on your computer will all, uh, all support casting. So whether you're using um, a mobile device like a tablet or um, like even your laptop, um, you can cast with the right setup from your mobile devices. So whatever live content you're looking at, say a Facebook live video, you could cast it to the TV so you can watch it on the larger screen. Um, now it's interesting, the Samsung TV that I have will natively support casting um, depending on what device and or app I'm using. So for example, um, I, if I'm gonna cast from, uh, let me think about this for a second. I think from YouTube, uh, I think Facebook might be the only one that doesn't support it, um, but I can cast directly to the TV without the Chromecast. Um, but I also have the Chromecast, so I have the choice uh, of using either one for casting. Um, let's see, we got a few questions here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the chat here and take a look at some of the questions or comments. Um, let's see. So again, a comment from, uh, from Kim. Um, Sling has a lot of channels, but seems harder to find shows. Probably more user error and learning than Sling. Maybe, maybe not. Um, 
Uh, I have not been able to get local channels on it. We have a new LG smart TV with all the apps. And, and you also have a Roku. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, different combination of hardware and what you actually get. Uh, we started with Who Live TV, 55 a month to get the channels we wanted and dropped it to try Sling. And I want to say Sling is 30 bucks a month. I remember it being less than some of the others um, when I was looking at prices. Anyhow, um, so as I was mentioning, some of the cable TV substitutes um, are, are fairly limited uh, in terms of the scope of what you can get. Um, you know, Hulu, Hulu Live TV, I should say. Um, PBS, of course, limited to the PBS catalog. Um, Sling TV and YouTube TV. Those are really your substitutes um, in terms of uh, truly having a cable-like experience in terms of even, I'm thinking mostly of things like news. Um, uh, I mean, you can go to the website for Fox News, CNN, CBS, you know, all the major networks. They have usually a subset of their regular programming in a recorded form. When there's something hot happening news-wise, you know, they usually or often have a live stream going that you can watch on, um, you know, your mobile device casting to your TV or directly through your smart TV. But these services, uh, pretty much everything but the PBS, they all support the, um, uh, pretty much the, the breadth of the programming that you're looking for with a cable subscription. And finally, I wanted to, uh, um, you know, in, essentially give you a kind of an overview of what are the, um, what are your choices here with um, uh, the different streaming services that I've discussed today uh, and the types of programming that they support. So, um, you know, all the major ones support, you know, TV shows and movies of, you know, various kinds that, um, you know, that may be things that are exclusive to a specific network. Um, but anyone who has uh, watched any content on things like Hulu, um, Amazon Prime and Netflix, you know that you know, they're kind of a, they're kind of a big, they have a big bucket, if you will. They have programming from across a whole different spectrum of different types of, you know, broadcast, traditional broadcast networks. Um, you know, they all support uh, some degree of kids programming, um, uh, news and or sports. You know, it gets a little more spotty there depending on, you know, again, really the content that you're looking for. It really all comes down to what is the content that you're looking for and which of these services uh, kind of, you know, does it all match up with in terms of what do they, what do they provide? Um, and, you know, what's the cost? Um, so like, you know, for example, the Amazon Prime, all of that programming is included with your whatever it is, a hundred bucks, a hundred and something a year, which also gives you the free shipping on Amazon. Um, you know, CBS All Access, that's around 15 bucks a month. So is Disney Plus, so is HBO Max. You know, the Hulu Live TV, um, Sling TV, um, YouTube TV, you know, you're getting now into, you know, a little bit pricier a, um, a uh, subscription there. And Sling is, yeah, 30 bucks a month. So, um, so yeah, so between usually like 30 and 55 a month is what you're going to be paying for the cable substitutes. And those will not include, you know, things like premium channels as, as you, as you knew them in the, in the cable world for things like HBO and, um, Showtime and that sort of thing. So, um, anyhow, um, that's all I had for today's programming. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to unmute and ask. Um, I just wanted to mention that I've got some uh, other programming coming up here in a couple of weeks. 
um, the uh, on the 21st, which is a Wednesday. I think I'm going to be moving this to Wednesdays, by the way, um, just because uh, I think I might have a little bigger audience if I change days. The 10 o'clock on Thursday time frame is popular uh, with some other folks that I know, and I'm just trying to not conflict with their um, uh, with their schedule. So yeah, so really a couple of announcements. One, moving Senior Tech Coffee to Wednesday, and then the second announcement, which um, which Jane alluded to uh, at the beginning of the call, is that I'm uh, moving Senior Tech Coffee to the Meetup.com uh, platform. So I'm no longer going to be publishing these events on Eventbrite after today's event. So if you want to um, sign up for uh, Smart Home Tech for Independent Living uh, on the 21st, uh, that'll be through Meetup. Um, the 22nd um, is going to be um, older adults in social media. I actually did that with Joyce Foistel last time. This is for the Mali Center, which is a, a senior focused rec center uh, in Englewood, Colorado. Um, they asked me to present uh, uh, on this subject and that'll be on Thursday, the 22nd. Another reason why I couldn't have uh, smart home tech for independent living on uh, on the Thursday of that week. So, so I'll be two days in a row uh, in two weeks. If you care to sign up, they're both free and on Zoom. Um, you will need to go through the uh, Englewood Parks and Rec. Uh, I'll, I'll, I should post a link to that on my website uh, so that people, anyone interested in the 22nd uh, talk can uh, go directly to that. Anyhow, uh, there's the new meetup uh, URL uh, for Senior Tech Coffee. Um, if you meet up is free to join um, and you can control how much email they send you for different things. Um, and, uh, and the talks, of course, are, are, are still free. Anyhow, uh, let me see. It looks like we've got maybe a couple questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the matrix, uh, the matrix that I just showed on the previous slide, um, uh, you can, um, <clears throat> the matrix on the previous slide, uh, I'll actually be publishing the slides. Uh, they'll be downloadable uh, and I'll send an email out uh, from, uh, to all the participants so that you can, uh, have a link to the slides, as well as uh, the recording of today's talk, if you're interested. And um, I guess that's all we have for today. This is my contact information uh, with all my different uh, sites and so forth. Uh, um, and that'll be in the slides as well. And I appreciate you uh, attending today. Uh, and. Um, Feel free to unmute if you have any questions. Um, we, uh, we didn't go the full hour today, but that's okay. Um, usually there's a lot of, uh, a lot more to talk about, um, but I wanted to try to keep it concise uh, just because some of this stuff is, <clears throat> some of this stuff you can get off, I, I could get off in the weeds, uh, <laughs> um, you know, pretty easily on uh, some of the different programs uh, or uh, streaming services. But if you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to uh, shoot me an email uh, as well, or you can talk, contact me through uh, Facebook uh, or LinkedIn. So anyhow, appreciate you taking the time to join me today. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks, Patrick.